Hey, uh, good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. I hope all is well. Um, just wanted to give a quick update as far as what's going to be happening. Today is May 4th. Um, I, I don't know if we'll be back. I miss you guys. Um, I, I definitely miss seeing all of your faces. Definitely something, you know, this, this is definitely a new normal that I think we're all kind of adjusting to, unfortunately. Um, I don't know if we'll be back, hopefully. Um, I know Governor Murphy has not canceled school for the year. Um, I think it's inevitable. Uh, just looking at New York, you know, Governor Cuomo just canceled New York schools. Uh, so did Tom Wolf over here in Pennsylvania, where I am. So I, I think it's only likely that New Jersey is going to going to follow suit. Uh, but you never know. Um, I'd love to see you guys uh, like in June, just just before we have a so we can have a proper send off. Um, I know most of your freshmen this course, some of your sophomores. So you know, getting through this year um, would be nice. A nice way to kind of end things. Um, as far as today's work is concerned. Um, you guys are moving on to a new, new career clusters. Um, you guys have government and public administration. Um, you have a, a pretty decently long activity. Um, I'm going to make it a summative grade. Um, what's going to happen with your activity on the government activity? I, I've given you guys, um, there are seven different types of jobs, pathways, if you will, within the government and public service sector. Um, what I want you guys to do is to go through at least one of the pathways, one of the jobs within each pathway, and just to give me a description about each one of those positions, like what's the salary like, um, what's the job description like, um, what are the education requirements for that particular job, um, what are some of the benefits that might be there. So this is an activity. It's going to take you some time. You know, I'll be I'll be on today for Google Meet at. I believe for period three, I'll be on something like 1130 in that ballpark 12 um, period nine tomorrow. I'll be on tomorrow for me. If you need help, uh, the Google meet is not required. Um, you don't need to go in there unless you absolutely have to. So if you're doing fine, you don't need to do it. Um, if you want to just talk and you're doing fine, that's fine. If you want to go in just to, for me to go over some stuff, that's, that's totally okay too. Um, for this activity, the one thing I will have you guys look at is there's different kinds of government. Um, so there's federal, there's state, um, there's local, and there's a school district. So as a school district employee, um, I am employed by the Board of Education, and that's a separate government than Hamilton Township. So just so you're clear, um, there's Hamilton Township, Mayor Jeff Martin, he, that, that's what he's in charge of, he runs it. Um, Scott Rocco, he's our superintendent um, in Hamilton Schools. They're, they're two separate areas of government. Um, Jeff Martin cannot give me an ultimatum to do my job um, as far as teaching is concerned. If it's an issue of public safety or public health, like so let's say we go back to school in, I don't know, September. Mayor Martin could make a, an executive order stating that all uh, employees, all people in a public space are required to wear a face mask. So he could make that decision. Um, the Board of Education doesn't necessarily, they, they have to go with it. So it, it depends on what's going on out now. Last year, if you guys remember, the teachers were going through a, ne a negotiation with their contract. It was taking a while. There was a lot of headache. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, Carol, Kelly Yady, who was mayor at the time, uh, she had little pa no, no power. You know, or Jeff Martin, he has no power on that negotiation. That, that's up to the Board of Education. Um, that's, that's up to other, like the superintendent will be there. The union will be there for the teachers. Um, that's a separate area of government. So although we're both employed with Hamilton, your parents' tax dollars pay my salary, a good amount of it. Um, and your parents' tax dollars pay Mayor Martin's salary. Um, we are still in separate levels of government. And so that's an activity there. I hope you guys kind of draw from it. Um, if maybe some of your parents, let's say they work, they're state, they're state troopers. Um, they're with the state police. Um, versus let's say a local uh, police officer, they're separate areas of government in which they're serving. Um, maybe some of your parents work for the federal government, for the US, US government. Um, a, post, a postal worker is somebody that works for the federal government. Um, an FBI agent, President Trump, they all are federal employees. Um, and so each of these sectors of government are different, but there are a lot of commonalities within them. Um, many of your parents I know are teachers, just like myself. Um, I know some of your parents are police officers. Um, our line of work for the state, let's say hypothetically, um, one of the things that, you know, me as, as, a, as, a, as a youngster growing up, both of my parents were in public, were in education. My dad worked at the College of New Jersey. My mom was a speech pathologist down in Northern Burlington. 
Most of my extended family were either teachers or police officers. So growing up, I understood in the public sector how things worked. Um, as far as getting hired, as far as the salaries were concerned, as far as the benefits were concerned, um, I was already accustomed to that. Um, so when I got married, my wife, who works in the business sector, um, there were a lot of unwritten rules that they, that she just didn't quite understand. Whereas, you know, growing up, like I said, in a parent and family of teachers and, and cops, um, there a lot of the unwritten rules that, you know, I, I knew already when I got into the job. So I'll give you an example. Um, as a public school teacher in New Jersey, um, within Hamilton, um, I'm afforded a lot of days off as far as sick time. Um, I get a lot of, per I get some personal time, I get family illness, uh, and I'm off July, August, and most of June. So what I'm going to tell you is this, um, although you have days off, uh, it's frowned upon if you take off at certain times of the year. So my father-in-law years ago, my wife had to go in for, uh, like a, a small, small procedure. Uh, and it was scheduled for the day after Christmas break. Um, I, I didn't take off because although like you know, my father-in-law had to go and watch my, watch my sister, help take my wife. Um, I couldn't go. Um, I could have taken a day off, uh, but it's frowned upon the public sector. You know, although you do have good job security, it's frowned upon to take time at weird times throughout the year. So the day before, the day after like a, a Christmas break, um, you can take off, um, but it's not really liked. It's not really looked upon as something that's positive. So, you know, I knew that going in, um, like public sector employees, those are, those are things that you just can't do. Um, other parts around the country, we'll talk about that with education. So public sector, I mean, just to give you an example of public sector, um, the pay can vary tremendously. So if you guys go through this activity, you're looking at, you know, public sector pay in Hamilton, let's say, versus Baton Rouge, Louisiana, or ours, Hamilton Townships, you know, New Jersey, our pay versus Ramsey schools up, up in North Jersey. Um, it's going to vary tremendously. Okay. So the salaries are going to change um, different parts of the country. They get paid differently. Um, their benefits vary. So like, just to give you an example, I, I know some of your parents, you know, maybe work for the state. I, I read a student last year uh, whose mother just retired at 47 years of age from the state. And so you may be thinking, oh my gosh, that's, that's really young, 47. How can they retire? Well, she started working uh, with the state at 22. She graduated college as an accountant, got a job with the state, um, got her 25 years in. She gets health care now. Um, I mean, she can't touch the benefits until she's 62, uh, but at 62, her and her husband are guaranteed health care until the day they die. And so it's a great benefit that New Jersey offers. Pennsylvania, although, you know, in my view, most Pennsylvania, you know, local government, the state, as well as the school districts offer better health insurance for their employees. The problem with Pennsylvania is that when you go to retire, in Pennsylvania, um, you lose your health benefits. So it's one of the things like in New Jersey, the way I describe it, um, you basically get the Chevrolet plan from, you know, the time you start working until the day you die. You have, you have a Chevrolet, it's reliable. It gets you where you have to be. In Pennsylvania, they give you the Cadillac. You have the Cadillac plan for while you're young and working. And then when you go off it, you have to go on Medicare. Um, and people have their views about it. I'm not going to get too political on that. Um, but you know, you lose the Cadillac basically when you need it most. So that that's one of the art, one of the things about Pennsylvania, there, there's no such thing, uh, in the public sector world as, you know, it, it's, it's all sunshine and rainbows in different places. It's not, there's no such thing as utopia. Um, some places have it better than others. You can make your decision as to how, um, other factors just to keep in mind. I mean, you may think, you know, things like FBI, if any of you are thinking about going to law enforcement, uh, believe it or not, the New Jersey State Police, uh, New York State Police, they both pay higher uh, for starting troopers than FBI does for starting special agents. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. You know, if, if you're, you want to become a state trooper versus an FBI agent, um, if you're a state trooper, you know, you're only staying in New Jersey. Um, if you're an FBI agent, you can be stationed anywhere in the world uh, as a federal agent. So um, that's something to think about, you know, and these are things that people don't always uh, necessarily think about as they go forward. Um, so that's the government sector. Um, I, I find it always interesting because you know, I work in this line of work. Um, I've always been a public sector guy um, as far as most of my employment's concerned. 
Um, and so that's something there that, that I, I definitely want you guys to start delving into. Um, as far as the different pathways are concerned, you guys have governance, you have national security, you have foreign service, you have planning, you have revenue and taxation, you have regulation, you have public management administration. Um, each of these do different things. Um, as far as national security, that, that was what I wanted to go for when I graduated college or foreign service. That was kind of where I was looking for. Um, I ended up just staying back in New Jersey. So, I mean, one of those things that, that's kind of nice about an education degree, if any of you are thinking about going for that route, um, it's always a fallback. Um, no matter what happens, you can always become a teacher. Um, there's always demand for education. Um, there's loads of public school districts throughout the country. So, I mean, it's always something you can go back to. You don't, don't have to do it for the rest of your, your rest of your time. Um, as far as regulations concerned, um, the one area, if you guys want to look at it is with casinos and gaming, um, that's where regulation plays a role. So like, I'll give you an example. Um, my grandfather who just passed, passed away a couple of years ago, um, he was originally a health and physical education teacher, uh, down in Pensacola. So if you guys know where Pensacola is, if I can, then not that far from here. Um, he graduated from TCNJ with a health and physical education degree. Um, he was going for his master's in administration over at Penn, University of Pennsylvania. And just when he finished the program, um, the state police in New Jersey offered him a job. And so it's going to sound crazy. His first salary as a teacher in Pennsauken was only $3,000 a year. That was it. Um, just to give you guys an idea, like a starting teacher in, in our district makes around 50000 bucks. So things have changed a lot with inflation. Um, the state police hired him. He worked his, worked his way through the ranks. He retired as a commandant. Uh, the state police in New Jersey, one of the downsides about their organization is they require retirement at 55. So at 55, it's, it's a, you can look at it from two angles. Okay, if they're 55 years old, um, you, you want to have some young blood, maybe in the state police uh, handling things. Um, but 55, as far as completely retiring for most people, that's really young to retire. So like he went back for his uh, PhD in counseling. He was going to be a school psychologist. And just when he completed his doctorate from Rutgers, um, the Tropicana down Atlantic City, they hired him as head of compliance. So he ended up not, he had his PhD in counseling, um, but he didn't go back for it. He ended up just working at the Trump. Um, a, a compliance is basically a regulator. So, so your job in that capacity is to make sure all the games are, are fair. Um, if somebody falls in the casino, it's his job to investigate it, uh, figure out what's going on. So one of the things I find interesting about this, you know, if any of you are watching Ozark, at all. I, I just finished up season three. It's really good. Um, one of the characters in the show, Ruth, they make her uh, basically the pit boss. She's the, she's head of compliance. My grandfather's job at a small casino. Um, in real life, that wouldn't happen because you have to go through a lot more training to get that kind of a job. So it, it's, it's a big deal. Um, regulators go, they, they make sure things are up to order. Things are up to speed. Um, so that's something there. I was depressed on Saturday morning because um, my favorite event of the year is the Kentucky Derby. And it's been postponed now to September. So the first Saturday of every May is the Kentucky Derby. Um, I'm trying to go there, Churchill Downs, at some point in time. Um, but right there with regulators, um, what's allowed for the horse tracks? Um, what is, is If it's something's too hot or whatever, um, that's something the states will, will, will decide. Um, so regulation is something that's a big deal um, with the state. Um, governance is something different. So like, although I work in the government, uh, I don't deal with governing. So I may vote and I may be interested in politics, but that, that is not my line. Um, so I'll give you guys the time to work on this. I'll give you guys until at least Tuesday. We'll, I'll see where you are with this particular assignment. Um, I'm going to finish up the rest of the career clusters um, probably sometime mid-May. Then we're going to go on to resumes. We'll talk about cover letters a little bit, um, and we'll go from there. I hope you guys are all well. Uh, be safe, be healthy, and please wash your hands. Um, I'll be on later today uh, in Google Meet if you want to talk to me. Um, just let me know. Thank you.